In all my presets and all the tuning guides and many others tuning guides, we always have the dynamic damping turned down or turned off. That's this little guy right here if you're in the Betaflight PID tuning tab and it has to do with these two, this D max and derivative here. And it, you can see it kind of adjusts that D max value. Like I said, if you apply any of my presets and follow any of the tuning guides, we're always turning that thing down to zero. But it begs the question, what is that there for then? And what are the appropriate conditions where you may want to look at using the Dmax for the damping or derivative term? So it's pretty simple. The only time you really wanna ever invoke dynamic damping or use the Dmax term is when you're looking for smoother forward flight or cooler motors. And that could be for racing or cinematic flights, anything from a cine log up to a cine lifter. The other thing it can do is extend some battery life and we can get into the weeds on that in a little bit. So let me show you an example of some shaky flight where we can use dynamic damping or D-Max to cover up some mechanical issues we're having on a cine log. So this may look familiar. This is a cine log and we have some shaky flight on it. Uh, there's something going on with it with a vibration. It's either something that has to do with the gyro or just something shaking on the quad. Uh, not really sure what the issue is coming from mechanically, but the use of D-Max or dynamic damping can help uh, kind of cover that up. And um, in a lot of cases, you know, save some money. Whereas if, look, if we can get some smooth flight out of this, then, you know, it could save a hundred bucks for buying a new flight controller or something of that nature. So it's worth a shot. And this is the forward flight that we're getting from it. So you can see it's quite a bit shaky there as we were making some turns on it. And it just got this slight jiggle and shake that he's trying to kick and get rid of and went through a bunch of stuff with them. And there's this, this 50 Hertz vibration that um, we're not really sure what it is. So our next step is going to be trying to implement some dynamic damping. Now, if you're coming from a preset or a tune that you have, and you're really happy with the tune, except for the shaking motion that you may have, there is a, the strategy of how you would implement dynamic damping. In that case, you need to really focus on this D max term and the derivative term. These are the two terms that we're gonna be adjusting with the dynamic damping. You can see that just with this slider here, see how dynamic damping, when I move that slider up and down, it's gonna move the D max up. Obviously if it's zero down, uh, when it's at zero, it's gonna make the D max match the derivative. Now do be aware that this works a little differently in older versions of Betaflight. So in this example, we're using Betaflight 4.5. If you're using a previous version of Betaflight, how it adjusts uh, Dmax versus derivative, those were kind of switched in 4.5. So do keep in knowledge. All the same fundamentals apply from this point forward. So um, just know that they're reversed, but you can apply all the same logic. So again, we're going to keep our eye on that Dmax term. And what happens there is when you implement a sharp move, like a sharp roll or flip, or your quad goes into a prop wash condition or some wind blows against it, the dynamic damping will raise the derivative gains up to the D-max gains. Now, when we're the dynamic damping slider there is set to zero, they're the same thing. So it doesn't move at all. However, obviously as you increase this slider, then it can boost those D gains up even higher. Again, that's gonna be when you enter into a sharp move or get some wind or prop wash. Now, a key factor in recognizing how this works is there's a delay. The quadcopter needs to first detect the move or input, which are generally slow in the grand order of things, you know, for you implementing a stick command move. So it generally boosts it as you're implementing that stick command, your slow fingers are moving. It's boosting the gains up by the time you get to the spot where you wanna put your fingers at or, you know, back to zero on the sticks, it, the dynamic gains have already been boosted. So it's fairly quick. However, in a prop wash condition, uh, it's typically a little too slow. Uh, so, by the time that it recognizes there's prop wash or wind blowing against the craft and then it boosts the gains, that could take anywhere up to five to 10 milliseconds, which is a world of time in the quadcopter world and how fast the, the cycles are going and how quickly you need things to react. It's, it's way, too, way too long. So um, that's generally the main reason why we're not using dynamic damping for peak, peak flight performance. So you do need to keep that in mind. Now, when we're looking at these gains, if you have them 
Uh, if you have a good balance between all the gains here, like this slider setup is working well for you, what we wanna make sure is that these DMAX gains stay the same value in relationship to your proportional gains that you might have over here. So in the case of trying to get smoother forward flight, what we want to actually do is push our D gains down as we're doing straight forward flight or racing, but only have them boost up when we enter a sharp stick move or we get some prop wash. So we have to jigger things a little bit to do that. We have to take a look at this 62 and 71 here in this example. And let's say we're going to move this dynamic damping up to a 1.0. So you should be able to just move that up to one or just double click it and it will just go to one. But now you can see that when we enter into a sharp stick move or get prop wash gains, our D gains are gonna boost up to 84. If you're doing this for smooth cinematic and trying to reduce motor heat, that is the opposite effect of what you're gonna want. So this next step is pretty key. That after you move that dynamic damping slider up, you will need to grow up to this damping slider here and you actually need to slide that down. So you might not get the exact number you can see here. I can't get 61, uh, so I can get 62 uh, and, six, and 72, that, that's really, really close. But even if you got to like 60 and 69, that's fine. When you're talking PID gains in Betaflight or INAV, if you have them within like five integer digits or what I would say is five points of the other gains, you're not gonna notice the, the difference. So a difference of one or two or three uh, integer or points, you're not going to notice the difference. Uh, so just get them within five. So with that, now our D max gains, when we enter into a sharp stick move, will boost back up. Let's just move this slightly up here, up to the 61 uh, and, and 71 or 62 now and 72. And that's in the same balance or same ratio as we had before with the proportional gain. But notice here, now our derivative gains, which is gonna be the D gains in smooth when we're doing just forward flight, are artificially suppressed. They're down at 47.53. So as you're just doing forward flight uh, and you're not doing dynamic moves, there's not a lot of damping you really need on the quadcopter. It's really when you enter into sharp moves or get prop wash or wind blowing against it that you need higher D gains. Now in iNav, you can use the same functionality for like a D min, D max, but how it works is a little different and how it presents itself is different as well. Now let's use Easy Tune for example. So we'll go into Easy Tune and then you have a damping uh, slider here and you can see above me here how moving this damping slider up and down adjusts these D gains. So you'd set these D gains, which are typically half of what uh, Betaflight uses. So uh, whatever they need to be, but let's say we're gonna have our D gains at 18 and 20 and that's good ratio with uh, our P's and things of that nature. And then from that point, we would go into our PID tuning tab and then our mechanics tab. And in here you have this D min scale and D max scale. And for that, you can basically have the D gains boost down or up on stick moves or on prop wash. So if you set D min by 0.5, that means the D gains will go down in half when you enter a start sharp stick move. And conversely, if you change this to a two, that means your D gains will double when you enter a sharp stick move or get into prop wash. They do say in the advice over here that you can set this uh, low pass for uh, basically your prop wash frequency. The advice here is not great though on um, the setting. So the default is 80 and that's, they're saying that it's like your prop wash frequency. Typically prop ish, even in a five inch is more like in the forties or fifties, sixties. Uh, so do, you know, move this down if you're expecting this to boost up at all. Uh, again, this one, we would have our D gains lower, artificially lower, and then we would just boost them up using the scaler here for sharp stick inputs, almost like the D max. So whatever you wanna, if you wanna double the gains, you'd put two here, you'd have your D gains lower, then you'd put two here. Uh, and then when you do a sharp stick input, it would double the gains. Uh, you, you'd have to kind of look at, okay, what, what are the gains here and what do double uh, and how well does that work with uh, your P gains here? So you don't see the, the gains uh, on the screen as easily as you do in Betaflight, but the same functionality can be there where you can have a dynamic damping. Um, and you can see they're slightly different between how they work. Uh, Betaflight only works one direction. Um, 
iNav works both directions, but then you just have these gain scalers versus uh, hard inputs on the gain splits, like what you see in Betaflight. Will this make prop wash performance better? No. Will this make, you know, dealing with wind gusts if you're mountain you know, diving better? No. That's not what we're fixing with this. We're fixing that jitter, like that person and that example flight footage. They're not mountain diving and having wind gusts and all. They just have shaky forward flight. And we're trying to suppress the D gains because most of that is coming from this noise in the gyro signal that's getting amplified by the D gains and getting pushed out to the motors. So one way to solve that is push those D gains down. And you may say, well, you should really should be addressing it with filtering. But when you have noise and vibration so low as 50 hertz, you are in the control frequency range uh, for your quadcopter. And having filters that low is really hurts uh, the flight performance. I don't even know. Some of the filters in Betaflight, you can't even get that low. And iNav, you can. But in Betaflight, you can't even set them that low. So that's counterproductive as well. And it also is going to hurt wind and other things so to be super clear the best thing to do is if you have shaky forward flight is to address the mechanical issue if some electrical or mechanical issue but if you cannot figure it out and you don't have the means to just unlimitedly spend money to try to solve this issue uh, then here might be a acceptable way to kind of manage it and and get something that's like hey this worked this is good enough for me that just saved me a couple hundred bucks or a hundred dollars or whatever it is and finally, just to look at what is going to happen here with that, you can see here, this is the log from that quadcopter. And you can see these yellow lines here are the D gains. And those D gains, when you see down here in the motor traces that, hey, look at the vibration here, look at the vibration showing up in the motor traces, they look the same magnitude. That is all coming from these D gains. So if we can suppress those during smooth forward flight, that will reduce the amount of vibrations we're getting here, which will reduce how much jitter is going to those motors, which is causing that shakiness. It's not just the quadcopter going through the air or getting hit by wind. It's the motors trying to make these micro adjustments that's causing that shaking. So again, reduce those D gains in smooth forward flight, only boost them up when we need them. And voila, we can get a good compromise and hopefully fix the shakes. And the shakes, that you know those little shaky things that we're seeing from the motors trying to go up and down many times your motors can't are trying to keep up with the, the frequency of how fast those shakes are going up and down so the esc definitely can the esc can keep keep up with those signals coming in and it will push those signals out to the motors and but the motors um the magnetic flux changes and the you know just the inertia of the bell can't move fast enough so it starts to get the motors to heat up it also makes the esc heat up it also uses more battery to move things up and down and all this kind of jazz for the electrical signals and everything that's going on in the esc so you're going to get another Good result out of this is your motor temperatures will come down now if they're not high to begin with you might not even notice it but your motor temperatures will come down and also you will see marginal not major unless you have a severe issue battery life increase so you'll see racers do this a lot as well because they don't want super high d gains they want as much battery life as possible and they use you know this dynamic damping in that way to keep d gains low while they're kind of just full throttling it, and they only really need it for sharp inputs uh, to boost. So it's kind of boosting up and boosting down uh, as they're going through the gates and things like that. Hey, well, that's it. So hopefully this helps and you can understand like, hey, why there's this you know dynamic damping here in Betaflight. Why is this here? We never use it. And uh, I generally try not to use it. And what the classic thing that's really the funniest about this is, I'm kind of the why the reason it's there. I didn't actually implement it. Chris Thompson implemented the code, but it was in this effort of, hey, if we could detect prop wash and boost the gains during prop wash, hey, that could help with uh, combating prop wash. So he implemented it. The problem was it, it takes too long for it to detect the prop wash and then boost the gains. By the time it boosts the gains, it's too late. So it never really worked out. So if you're looking for peak flight performance, you definitely want to keep this down like your quads mechanically great. It's smooth forward flight. You're looking for peak flight performance. You want to get this all the way down and then use this uh, slider or the master slider to get these D gains, the derivative and the D max, which are basically the same number at that point, as high as possible, uh, obviously in relationship to all that you want to have all the gains as, as high as possibly can for the best, uh, you know, 
resistance to wind and prop wash and things of that nature. But again, that's outside the scope of this video. This is just for smoothing out some shakes in forward flight. And that is the example of where you can bring back dynamic damping to help with that. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them down below. Thanks everybody. Hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.